guys, it's Allie Rose. Welcome back to my channel. So today, instead of doing the weekly Rosie News Report, I want to tell you guys a story. Buckle up, y'all. It's going to be a rough ride. So today, I'm going to be telling you guys a story of how I was bullied by my high school best friend. Yikes. This one's a doozy. So when I was in high school, I didn't have a whole lot of friends. Everyone in my year was just kind of not really my style. I mean, they were... They were okay people, I just kind of didn't really get along with them at the time. So I kind of gravitated towards these two people. Let's call them Sophia and Daniel. Those are good names, Sophia and Daniel, we're gonna call them that. So Sophia and Daniel were both a year older than me and Daniel was just this really, really cool guy, really nice, everybody loved him. Sophia, she was a nice person, but she was very misunderstood. A lot of people misunderstood her. So here comes my disclaimer. Sophia, you will know who you are if you watch this video. If this ever ends up getting back to you, you will know who you are. For whatever happened, I forgive you. I hope you can forgive me for whatever I did wrong to you, but I'm really, I've moved on. We're all grown up and it's just, it's in the past. Alright, so let's get into the actual story. So, um, I was pretty young and naive at the time that I knew Sophia and Daniel, um, and we were always just together, just the three of us. It was always just the three of us, and we always just had the best time. Like, we would come over to each other's houses and just stay there until after dark, and this was a time in the early 2000s where like your parents all knew each other everybody knew everybody and so you would be at so and so's house until the street lights came on and then you would walk home so it was just all of us every day hanging out together in the same spot and um, what ended up happening was looking in hindsight I was definitely taken advantage of a little bit so she would say little things like oh well you know just lie to your parents it's okay they won't find out and like little things like that not really about big things like I would never like she never made me do drugs or drink alcohol or anything like that which you know at, at the end of the day she was a really good friend for it's that she never really let me get into get myself into anything dangerous so that's that was fine but she would just have me lie to my parents about like where I was going and how late I'd be home and just stuff like that. So but what really happened, I, I remember one day sticks out of my mind, was when I we were all in the cafeteria together and I was getting up to throw my trash away and she wanted me to throw hers away and I said no. So she smacked me in the back of the head. <laughs> So like that was in like ninth or tenth grade and so that was the one that really sticks out in my head. The other thing that really sucks, sticks out in my head is that she, Sophia, almost got into a fight with this other girl. Um, what should we call her? Let's call her Mona. She almost got in a fight with my with Mona who was also kind of good friends with me. She lived, she rode the bus with me every day and so she lived really close to my house and so I knew her pretty well. And she, the two of them almost got in a fight, and both of them expected me to take their side. But for the life of me, it's almost, it's gonna be 13 years later, and I cannot remember what the fight was about. It was, knowing the fact that we were like 14 or 15 years old, it was probably something uber stupid, just omega stupid, and I can't even remember what it is. So, the day that happened, I remember they started like getting into like this little petty argument back and forth and it was gonna come to like pushing and shoving and um, they were both like in each other's faces yelling and screaming but neither of them were throwing a punch and little old me who's like short and little and scared of everything isn't gonna jump in the middle of this crap because you know I don't need it so so then Sophia kept running around and saying oh if you really looked at the fight Mona kept, was the one who kept backing away from me, and Mona was the one who instigated it, and yada, 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 yada. Meanwhile, Mona wasn't really going around talking that much crap about it. She was just kind of like, oh, well, no one likes Sophia anyway, whatever. So, like, it was, it was real petty. Like, there was nothing really happening. Again, we were 14 or 15 years old. The argument was probably over something stupid. So, Sophia kept expecting me to just all of a sudden be on her side 
when me observing the situation and watching, it was kind of Sophia's fault. <laughs> and so like, I, I didn't, of course I was scared of her, so I didn't tell her that, but I was so scared of this girl. For the life of me, again, I can't figure out why little 15 year old me was just afraid of this random girl that, you know, even though she was my friend, like, that's not, that is not how a friendship it should be. If you are afraid of your friend, that person does not need to be your friend. And so that was actually red flag number one. Um, red flag number two was there was a time when Dan and I had a little thing going on and we started dating and um, again, Sophia convinced me that it was a good idea to lie to my parents about like the little things and so I did but then she when the going really got tough and my parents would come down on me about it um she would never be there for me like she would just be like okay well you shouldn't have listened to me then you shouldn't have lied to your parents and so that led to like a really big fight between me and my parents and we're the better off now for it and I don't need to go into details but you know it is what it is so the next thing that happened after that was actually the end of our friendship it was after I started in college when I was 18 or 19 years old and she was kind of like we were kind of growing apart a little bit like we were hanging out less and less and so like it was kind of a long time coming anyway but what ended up happening was the final nail in the coffin was that she tried to tell me that she was more important than my family was and that's when I was like <laughs> no no honey it's a wrap and kind of said okay no you're not gonna be more important to my family than me ever and this is it this is the end of our friendship you can go by right now because I no longer need you in my life so I remember my sister was there in the next room and she heard me like crying and screaming and so my sister was like oh are you okay and I was like so Sophia and I just like ended our friendship and I don't know what to do like I don't know where to go from here and this is this I'm gonna age myself this was in the days of MySpace so my sister sent her a MySpace message and she said have fun tripping over a bush on Mysterio Lane, bitch. So those of you who watch Jesper High Housewives know that it's a reference to that. And so that was kind of the end of our friendship. And it really hurt my feelings that it came to that where she was like, oh, but I want to be on a higher pedestal than everyone else. And it made me look back at our friendship and think that our whole friendship, the whole time we were friends, it was maybe like three or four years of my life she just wanted to be on the highest pedestal. She wanted to be first priority. And I have so much other stuff going on. I was starting culinary school. I was in ROTC. I had so much other stuff going on and so many other friends that I could have gone and hang out with and not wasted my time on this one toxic concept in my life of, well, I have to take this person and put them in front of everybody else. So that is my advice to you guys at the end of all this, the lesson from this story is if someone wants to be in front of your family or if someone wants to be number one in your life then you need to be number one in your own life you need to be kind of confident you need to say that you know what you're not gonna be number one in my own life I'm gonna be number one in my life so for me God is number one family is number two I am number three and then everybody else follows because I can't take that person and have them be in front of, of everybody else without them being, without them giving me something out of the relationship too. I was getting nothing out of that relationship. I was just her little lap dog and she took me and she used me to do her bidding and do whatever she wanted and orchestrate my life in ways that she wanted to. So yeah. All right guys. So I'm sorry for the rambling. Um, my, my, memory of the situation is obviously just a little bit fuzzy because this was I don't know seven years and back <laughs> seven years ago and back um, back in high school I'm now 27 years old and this person has been out of my life for almost nine years so um, I just remembered this story the other day when I was talking to my boyfriend and his best friend and seeing the fact that they the two of them their names are Brandon and Zach you guys have met Brandon and Zach before actually um, they've been friends since they were just itty bitty babies, like maybe five years old. And so 
seeing the way those two are friends is actually really inspiring. I don't really have friends from my childhood like that because all of my friends were back in Jersey. So the way that they were friends throughout everything is really kind of inspiring. So if any of you guys have friends like that, let me know in the comments. Let me know what is the favorite thing about your best friend. And I'll tell you the favorite thing about mine. My best friend is, her, her name is Ariel and she is the most selfless person I've ever met. Ariel, if you're watching this, and Tosh, especially you there in Australia, I love you guys so much. The two of you are incredible and you deserve to be on my number four and five pedestal in my life. All right, you guys. So if you guys enjoyed watching this, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe and turn on my notifications below if you love me. And I will see you guys on the next weekly Rosie news report or story time. We'll see how I'm feeling. Anyway, guys, have a great rest of your night, and I'll see y'all next time.